the Mazarian High Council collectively burst into mocking laughter as the human captain described the immense fleet gathering at the edge of their star system, clearly not believing a single word. That laughter died in their alien throats as Captain Dennis Jackson revealed the terrible truth. Those ancient warships that nearly wiped out the Mizarians eons ago were not just returning, they were built by humanity's ancestors and crewed by humans seeking vengeance for a long-forgotten war. Dennis leaned back in his uncomfortable alien chair as the council chamber erupted into a cacophony of shouting and accusatory gestures. The Mizarian emperor slammed his fist on the table, his facial tentacles squirming with unbridled rage. Preposterous! You expect us to believe that your backward species is responsible for the ships of legend? The captain smiled, having anticipated their disbelief. He nodded to his aide, a sturdy marine in dress uniform. The aide opened an armoured case, revealing a pitted and scorched piece of metal. This is a fragment of hull plating from one of those ships. As you can see, it has human script on it. We matched it to a dialect used by a long-dead Earth civilization, one that mysteriously vanished 20,000 years ago. The council members looked at each other nervously, realizing the gravity of the situation. If the humans were telling the truth, then the Mizarians had made a terrible mistake by antagonizing Earth for so long. Humanity had apparently once commanded vast and powerful warships, but had somehow lost that knowledge and been reduced to a minor species on the galactic stage. Until now. An elderly counsellor spoke up, her voice quavering. What do they want? Dennis sighed, locking eyes with Horus, the only friendly face in the room. They want what was stolen from them, the Mizarian homeworld. The fleet is here to take it back through diplomacy or by force. The Emperor's eyes narrowed. Then it will be war! He turned to his advisers and ordered the Mizarian fleet to mobilize. Dennis shook his head as the council chamber emptied. He had to find a way to stop this conflict before it began. If the ancient human fleet attacked with their devastating weaponry that once nearly shattered the Mizarian Empire, then billions could die. And if the Mizarians somehow managed to destroy those ships, then Earth would lose any chance to recover its lost heritage and rise again as a galactic power. He felt a hand on his shoulder. It was Horus looking grim. My friend, we must find a path to peace or both our worlds will burn. Jackson took a deep breath, his mind racing as he watched the Mizarian council chamber empty out. The Emperor's brash declaration of war echoed in his head. He had to act fast to prevent the destruction of both their civilizations. He tapped his comm badge. Jackson to Earth Command, Priority One. After a burst of static, a familiar voice came through. Admiral Singh here, what's the situation, Captain? Sir, the Mizarian Emperor just declared war on the incoming fleet. He refuses to believe they're connected to ancient humanity. There was a heavy sigh on the other end. Damn, that complicates things. We still don't know what we're dealing with here. I don't like the idea of jumping into a fight without more intel. Jackson nodded, even though the Admiral couldn't see him. Agreed, sir. I think our best course of action is to investigate further, try to figure out what we're up against. Very well, Captain. You have my authorization to gather more information, but do it quietly. We don't want to tip our hand just yet. Understood. Jackson out. He turned to Horace, who had been listening intently. Looks like it's up to us to get to the bottom of this. The Mazarian scientist's facial tentacles twitched nervously. Where do we start? Jackson rubbed his chin thoughtfully. You mentioned prophecies about these ships. Let's dig into those records, see if there are any clues we missed. And we should analyze the sensor data on that fleet. Look for anything unusual. They got to work, Horus using his clearance to access the Mizarian defense network, while Jackson pored over ancient texts. Hours passed as they sifted through the data, searching for answers. I think I found something, Horace said suddenly, his eyes widening. The energy signatures coming off those ships. I've never seen anything like it. It's orders of magnitude, beyond anything we have. Jackson leaned in, studying the readout. The materials, too, our scans can barely penetrate the hull. 
It's like they're using some kind of super-advanced alloy. He cross-referenced the sensor data with the Mazarian prophecies, and a chill ran down his spine. The parallels were uncanny, tales of an invincible armada wielding world-shattering weapons, laying waste to entire star systems before vanishing into myth. There's more, Horace said grimly, pulling up an encrypted file from the deepest recesses of the archives. Fragments from the last time they appeared, it mentions a hidden research outpost where Mazarian scientists were studying their technology. Jackson met his gaze, a plan forming in his mind. Then that's our next stop. If there's anything left of that outpost, it might hold the key to stopping them. They quickly gathered supplies and commandeered a scout ship from the Mizarian fleet, plotting a course for the remote moon. As they launched into the void, Jackson couldn't shake the feeling that they were racing against the clock. The Mizarian fleet was mobilizing for war, and the mysterious armada drew closer with each passing moment. Time was running out. The scout ship touched down on the desolate surface of the remote moon, kicking up a cloud of dust and debris. Jackson and Horace disembarked, their breath fogging in the thin atmosphere. They scanned the barren landscape, searching for any sign of the hidden outpost. There, Horace said, pointing to a faint outline in the distance. That ridge formation matches the coordinates in the archive. They trudged across the rocky terrain the low gravity making their steps feel light and bouncy. As they drew closer, they saw that the outpost was largely buried, its once proud structures reduced to crumbling ruins. Jackson ran his hand along a weathered wall, brushing away centuries of grime. Hard to believe this place has been here all this time, waiting to be found. They picked their way through the rubble, following the faint energy signatures detected by their scanners, Eventually they came to a massive blast door, half hidden beneath a collapsed section of roof. Horace examined the locking mechanism, his facial tentacles twitching with concentration. It's an old Mizarian design, but I think I can bypass it. He fiddled with the controls, and after a tense moment, the door groaned open, revealing a dark passage beyond. They activated their helmet lights and stepped inside, the beams illuminating a long-abandoned corridor filled with debris and the scattered remains of ancient equipment. At the end of the hall, they found another door, this one sealed tight. Jackson tried the controls, but they were dead. Looks like the power's out, we'll have to cut through. He pulled out a plasma torch and got to work, the bright flame slowly melting through the reinforced metal. When the door finally fell away, they found themselves in a large, circular chamber. In the center stood a pedestal upon which rested a strange device. As they approached, motion sensors triggered, and the device hummed to life. A flickering hologram appeared above it, the image distorted and filled with static. Jackson frowned, trying to make out the words. It's an old Earth language, but I can't quite... Suddenly the message cleared and a human face appeared. The man looked haggard and worn, his eyes haunted. If you are seeing this, then the worst has come to pass. The warships we created have turned against us, and our civilization is on the brink of annihilation. Jackson and Horace shared a stunned look as the recording continued. We thought we could control them, use them to protect ourselves from the dangers of the galaxy. But we were wrong. They've become an unstoppable force, consuming everything in their path. The man's voice began to break. We've managed to lure them into a trap, a distant system where we can disable them. But the cost... The cost will be high. If they should ever reactivate, if they should ever return, you must find a way to stop them, or all will be lost. The hologram flickered one last time and died, leaving them in stunned silence. Jackson reached out and picked up one of the data crystals, turning it over in his hands. This changes everything, he said quietly. We have to get this information back to Earth, warn them what we're really up against. Horace nodded grimly. And we must convince the Emperor to stand down before he leads us into a war we cannot win. As they turned to leave, they found themselves face to face with a squad of heavily armed Mizarian soldiers. 
The leader stepped forward, his weapon trained on Jackson's chest. Captain Jackson, you are under arrest for treason and espionage. Surrender now or face the consequences. Jackson raised his hands slowly, his mind racing. He had to find a way out of this, had to get the truth to his people before it was too late. The fate of two worlds hung in the balance and time was running out. The Mazarian guards dragged Jackson and Horus into the council chambers, shoving them roughly to their knees before the Emperor. The room was deathly silent, the only sound the hum of the holographic displays. Jackson looked up at the Mazarian leader, seeing a mix of anger and fear in his dark eyes. "'No stand accused of high treason,' the Emperor growled, his facial tentacles quivering. "'What do you have to say for yourselves?' Jackson took a deep breath, knowing everything depended on what he said next. He nodded to Horus, who activated the ancient recording device. The flickering image of the human scientist appeared, delivering his dire warning. As the message played, Jackson watched the faces of the Mazarian counsellors, seeing their expressions shift from scepticism to dawning horror. When it was finished, he stood, ignoring the guards' attempts to restrain him. You see now the true nature of the threat we face. This isn't about our petty squabbles or ancient grudges. This is about the survival of both our peoples. The Emperor leaned forward, his clawed hands gripping the arms of his throne. And you expect us to trust you after all the lies and deceit? Jackson met his gaze unflinchingly. I expect you to look at the evidence, the sensor data, the historical records, the artifacts we recovered. It all points to one undeniable truth. That fleet out there was created by our ancestors, and it nearly destroyed your civilization once before. Horus stepped forward, holding out a data pad. We've analyzed their technology, and it far surpasses anything either of our species has developed. If they attack, we won't stand a chance. The room erupted into a cacophony of shouting and argument. The councillors divided. Some called for immediate retaliation, others for surrender. The Emperor raised a hand, silencing them. Enough, he roared, his voice echoing off the chamber walls. He turned to Jackson, his eyes narrowed. Say we believe you. What do you propose we do? Jackson squared his shoulders. We put aside our differences and work together. Combine our fleets, our resources, our knowledge. It's the only way we have a chance of stopping them. The Emperor was silent for a long moment, the tension in the room palpable. Finally he nodded. So be it. We will recall our ships and reach out to your leaders on Earth. But mark my words, Captain. If this is some trick, some ploy, I will personally ensure you suffer the consequences. On Earth, Admiral Singh stared at the message from the Mizarian Emperor, hardly believing what he was reading. He immediately convened an emergency session of the UN Security Council, presenting the evidence Jackson and Horace had uncovered. There was a moment of stunned silence as the implications sank in, then a flurry of questions and debate. Some argued for a preemptive strike, others for a purely defensive posture. Singh listened to the arguments, his mind racing. Finally, he stood calling for order. We have a choice to make, he said, his voice grave. We can face this threat divided and surely fall, or we can stand together and have a fighting chance. I propose a joint task force, human and Mizarian, to intercept the approaching fleet. There was a murmur of agreement, and the motion passed unanimously. Singh immediately began assembling the task force, pulling in the best ships and crews from across the galaxy. As the fleet gathered, Jackson and Horace pored over the data from the ancient outpost, searching for anything that could give them an edge. They worked tirelessly, fueled by adrenaline and desperation. There! Horace exclaimed, pointing at a schematic. The central control hub, if we can take that out, it might disrupt their coordination, make them vulnerable. Jackson nodded, a grim smile on his face. Then that's our target. We hit them hard and fast, everything we've got. As the task force set out, the mood was tense but determined. Soldiers and crews from two species that had been at each other's throats now worked side by side, united by a common enemy. On the bridge of the flagship, Jackson stared out at the stars, wondering what the coming battle would bring. Win or lose, he knew, nothing would ever be the same again. 
the fate of two civilizations hung in the balance, and the time for talk was over. Now there was only the fight. The Joint Task Force dropped out of hyperspace with weapons charged and shields raised. As the swirling vortex dissipated, the ancient fleet filled their viewscreens, a chilling sight of angular black ships bristling with strange protrusions. For a heartbeat, the two armadas faced each other across the void, an eerie calm before the storm. Then all hell broke loose. The ancient ships opened fire, lancing out with searing beams of crimson light that sliced through hull plating like a scalpel. Mazarian cruisers shattered, spilling debris and bodies into the void. Human destroyers reeled away, trailing smoke and sparks. On the bridge of the flagship, klaxons blared and damage reports flooded in. Jackson gripped the armrests of his command chair as the deck shuddered beneath him. Evasive maneuvers, he barked. Reroute power to forward shields. Horus hunched over his console, his face bathed in the glow of tactical displays. Our weapons are barely scratching them. We can't take much more of this. Jackson clenched his jaw. They were being torn apart and the enemy ships weren't even trying. At this rate they wouldn't last another five minutes. There was only one option left. The control hub, he said, pulling up the schematic they had recovered. It's our only chance if we can take it out, the whole fleet will collapse. Horace looked up, his eyes widening. But our ships are in no shape to punch through their lines. It's suicide. It's not for all of us. Jackson stood, his face grim. Our leader strike team will use the fleet as a distraction, draw their fire while we slip aboard and disable the hub from the inside. Horace opened his mouth to protest, but the words died on his lips. He saw the resolve in Jackson's eyes, the quiet acceptance of what had to be done. Slowly, he nodded. Jackson gathered his team, a mix of human and Mazarian commandos. They loaded into a cloaked shuttle, checking weapons and sealing suits. As the airlock hissed open, Jackson paused, looking back at Horus. If this doesn't work, he swallowed hard. It's been an honor. Horus clasped his arm. Go, we'll keep them busy. The shuttle darted out, weaving through the chaos of battle. Beams of energy crisscrossed the void, ships exploding in silent fireballs. The ancient ships loomed ahead, their hulls pitted and scarred. They slipped through a damaged airlock, the shuttle's belly scraping the deck. The interior was dark and cold, the air stale with age. They moved out, weapons ready, picking their way through the silent corridors. Automated defences flared to life, raking the strike team with blistering energy. They returned fire, the air thick with the ozone tang of melted metal. Jackson led the charge, his rifle spitting plasma bolts. They pushed deeper into the ship, following the schematics. The resistance grew heavier, the ancient guardians throwing themselves at the intruders with mindless ferocity. The commandos fell one by one, buying their advance with blood. Finally they reached the control room, a vast chamber thrumming with eldritch machinery. Jackson rushed to the central console, his fingers flying over the unfamiliar controls. Data scrolled across the screens, ancient human script mingled with alien glyphs. Then he saw it, the failsafe, the final option. A cold realization settled over him. The failsafe could only be triggered from here, from this room, and whoever did it would be trapped. He looked at his team, at the battered remnants of the strike force. They were watching him, waiting for orders, waiting for him to save the day. He made the call. Fall back to the shuttle, he ordered, his voice steady. I'll finish this. There was a moment of confusion, of protest. He cut them off with a sharp gesture. That's an order. Go now. Slowly, reluctantly, they filed out, all except Horus. The Mizarian stood there, his face a mask of anguish. Dennis, he started, but Jackson shook his head. You have to go. Someone has to make sure this never happens again. Someone has to build that new future we talked about. Horace's shoulders slumped, the fight going out of him. He knew Jackson was right, knew that this was the only way. He turned to leave, pausing at the threshold. I'll make sure they remember you. 
that they remember what you did here. Jackson managed a smile. I know you will. Then Horace was gone and Jackson was alone. Alone with the weight of two civilizations on his shoulders. He turned back to the console, his hand hovering over the failsafe control. Around him the ship shuddered as the battle raged outside, as the last gasp of an ancient war played out. He keyed the calm one final time. Jackson to fleet, the package is delivered, repeat the package is delivered, begin withdrawal. Static crackled, then Horace's voice filled the room. Acknowledged, all ships fall back to rally point, and Dennis, thank you. Jackson closed his eyes, a single tear tracing down his cheek, signing off. He cut the link and took a deep breath, then he pushed the button. Across the battlefield, the ancient ships stuttered and jerked, their engines going dark, their weapons falling silent. One by one, they began to explode, consumed by internal fires as the failsafe protocol spread like a virus. On the flagship, Horace watched the destruction with a heavy heart. The war was over, they had won, but the cost... He thought of Jackson, of his sacrifice, of the future they had dreamed of building together. Now it was up to him to make that dream a reality, to forge a new path between their peoples, to ensure that Jackson's death had not been in vain. He squared his shoulders, the weight of that responsibility settling onto him like a mantle. It would not be easy. There would be challenges, setbacks, old grudges and new fears to overcome, but he would not falter. He would not fail. For in the end, it was not just for his friend that he fought, it was for all of them, human and Mazarian alike, for the chance to build something better, something stronger. A future worth fighting for. If you finished this story, please subscribe and like the video. Then leave a comment that says, I like the story, and I will heart every single one of them. It really helps me. Thank you for your time.